There are two. Thank you. There are two new assignments. So nature's fury is is over. These two are the ones we're working on now. This one is really cool because I want everyone, whether you're going to design a 3D model or not to print, I want you to learn how to do it just in case, okay? Because Potential Energy Design Lab is the lab where you can bring in other stuff. Do you remember on Nature's Fury, I tried to limit you to only what's in your kit? Yeah. Well, we, we added, you can bring Legos from home, different, I've got Legos uh, too, but you can also design 3D objects, and I've got other things that you can do as well. But here's how this one works. So, it's a pretty complex challenge, but once you understand it, you're going to do just fine. Um, we did have a glitch when I moved some people from 6A and 6B into 6C. Google Classroom didn't generate a potential energy document. So if you are new to 6C, and let's say you go to the task, and there's nothing there, and you go to assignment, you're going to open Google Classroom, there's going to be an error. Okay? Here's what you do. All you do is click on the link in the story. You see how it's underlined? Yeah. I made it a link. So when you click on it, it's going to say, hey, make a copy. And you're going to say, whatever the button says, you're going to click on it. It's going to copy this document. And then you know you are set. And I'll show you later on how to attach this document to Google Classroom. Okay, so um, this starts with company name. You and your partner. I'm just waiting because I get distracted easy. Um, you and your partner are going to come up with a, a company. All right. And your job is to create something that's going to be more energy efficient. You're an energy efficiency group, all right? So come up with a name that has to do with engineering, energy, physics, efficiency. And like before, you're gonna write down your name and the name of your partner or partners if you're in a team of three. So here are the things you need to uh, take into account. You're going to design and build a robot that uses the following to do a, a job using the least amount of power possible. Why would anybody want to build a robot that uses the least amount of power possible? Do we want robots that go slower? No. Maybe slower is not why we want to do it. Kenzie, what do you think? Maybe last longer. And so you don't have to use so much power? You don't have to use as much power, Aaron. Um, doesn't cost that much money. Let's go to the bottom line. If you save power, you're also saving money. So it's going to cut costs, okay? So you're in the business now of creating a cost-effective robot that can do the same amount of work, maybe in the same amount of time, but for less power. All right? Now, here's what we have to take into account. Gravity, because it, it's here, right? Yeah. We can't get away from it. Height. Hmm. You're going to find out why height is important. Mass. How do we tell the mass of an object? Yeah, we can just weigh it. We can just weigh it. And velocity. Ooh. Didn't we calculate speed and how fast? Yeah. So you already have a head start on how to calculate velocity. But spoiler, velocity is not the same as speed. <gasps> we'll find out how. Okay, so we've got a couple of science standards this project targets. P 
PS2, which stands for Physical Science Standard Number 2, Motion and Stability, Forces and Interactions. Here's what you need to do. Provide evidence that the change in an object's motion depends on the sum of the forces the, uh, on the object and the mass of the object. We're going to prove that. And by we, I mean you. And of course, we need to take into account physical science standard number three on energy. Describe the relationship of kinetic energy to the mass of an object and to the speed of an object. You're going to learn that too. I know. Quite uh, exciting. Now, you can build a robot that does anything. Anything. Does that mean you can use your nature's fury idea? Yeah. Yes. So those of you who got your nature's fury approved, and you've already started building, you don't have to change a thing. You don't. All right? These ideas are just ideas. This is stuff students have done in the past. Some students have made a robot that can cut things. What? But you have to have kind of a slicing motion. Um, a slicer. Or some people made serrated edge so that it could uh, chop something this way. Uh, some people have made a robot that can literally push a button. And they tried to make it type on their keyboard. And some of them actually did. But it was hard to get it to type a word. Um, hole puncher. Nobody's tried that with that. Seems kind of hard. Um, but yeah, you could be creative. So guess what? If you and your partner say, hey, let's do something different, can you? Yeah. Yes. This is the project where you can do something, what you've already designed for nature's fury, or come up with a new idea, and you're going to write that there. Okay, what is your robot? So that's your first thing to figure out. What's your robot going to do, okay? And... The research, we're going to do this one together because that one's going to be kind of cool. Uh, but I want to introduce a friend of mine who's going to help me show you other things you can use besides Legos and 3D printed objects. Who's your little friend? My little friend, her name is BB-8. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's okay. She often loses her head. The camera's not seen that actually. But it comes. This one is. So, this is BB-8. Are you okay? Here, let's try and have you. She's not happy. She's not happy with you. Oh. Oh, why do you keep going for that? Oh, oh, oh. Woo! She's flexible. There we go. Uh -oh. Well, and the nice oh. thing is... Oh! Her head will fall off. I was always worried about her losing her head, but it pops right back on because it's magnetic. <laughs> so, I've got heroes. Um, yeah, BB-8, sorry. She's for me. These are for you. You can use a robot that comes in the shape of a sphere, which is why it's called Sphero. I also have, if you want something less robotic, I've got an assortment of Matchbox cars because they do really well with gravity, don't they? See, Spheros, you can program them to use their internal motor so you don't need to worry about gravity. But something like this, gravity, will make a, um, a, a, a difference. Plus, think it through with me. Remember how, ooh, this one's called the Cruise Bruiser. And oh. yeah, that's very nice. Um, height. You've got gravity. If I put this on an inclined plane, will the height matter? Oh, yes. Really? Yes. Ooh, you'll have to figure that out. Because if I started from here, it might go a certain distance, but if I start it from way up here, what do you think? It might not go far. Yeah, think about Newton's first law. An object in motion, if gravity's pulling on it, it's going to make it accelerate more and more, and then it's going to have more energy to go farther until friction slows.
slows it down and stops it. And you can totally calculate all those things. Oh, yes. For you math fans, you'll get to flex your math muscles. All right? So, here's what I want you to do before we go any further. I'm going to have you with your teammate just kind of think whether, here's your choice. For right here, are you going to keep your nature's fury design or are you going to make your robot do something new and different? So talk to your partner and decide nature's fury or something new.